I'm Ethan, I love muzzle loading. We've got a new muzzle loader kit to build. This time, we're building a Kibler Woods Runner. Just in case you're new to muzzle loading, the Kibler Woods Runner is the latest as of early 2024 kit from Kibler's Long Rifles. It's based on an original piece that Jim studied and personally built a copy of previously before he even started making these kits. So first up here in our instructions, I'm going to fit our barrel to the stock. Now it's nice and snug. We need to remove and install our trigger. Just setting those pins to the side in our box. Oof. I just want to note, watching the video, um, really clever, this little spike back here to go into the stock. Just a neat way to do that. This feels a lot like lock picking. trying to thread this needle where you can't see it. There we go. Our pin is through the other side. that back like so so that it is underneath our mortise well, just a hair more probably and Jim used a file And we get to try to fish it back in there. A lot easier the second time. As always, I'm by no means a master muzzleloader builder. I just enjoy putting these kits together, working with my hands a little bit, and learning something along the way. If you can, consult one of the real professional builders that are out there. There's a ton of guys on Facebook, Instagram, and especially the American Long Rifles Forum. And I encourage you to join that forum if you want to see and read about what these builders are talking about, what they're saying, and what they're personally doing. And then you can ask your own questions as well, which I've already done in preparation for building this kit.
working on the patch box lid here and it was going in but I, I'm not getting a click and my fit against the end of the butt plate is good but my spring isn't actuating and I've got a worn section on the brass there so what I'm doing very gently working this catch back with my flat file and now we should be pretty close there we go I'll be able to work that back just a touch more there we go at this point now this should work, I don't know, in, I think, an hour with uh, the difficulty I had with our trigger. Um, we could go out and hunt with this if we really need to, which is kind of crazy. So at this point, Kibble recommends doing a function test. That works great. Have a real good trigger pull too. Yeah, just right out the gate. I really like that. Great. Wow. Okay. Now we can start dropping in our ramrod pipes. These are cast. And I'm following along with what Jim recommended. It's going to clean up any flashing on either end <laughs> and then something I'm going to do on these so that I remember which one is which so we're going to do a two and a one mark on both of these so our one will be our four end and our two will be our rear end. And to go along with that, just down in that, I'm gonna mark two and I'm gonna mark one. So our notches will be to the rear. It might be kind of ugly, but the pipes are gonna hide that. And I'm just pressing that down in there. We'll grab a clamp, make sure to clamp onto our barrel. Maybe we wanna come in the other side. All of our pins have gone from side plate to lock, so I guess we should keep that. That looks like it fits to me. So we're just going to move on. Give this guy a good clamp, make sure he fits. He does. Okay. Our one and our one. Okay. Good deal. Next, I'm going to take a look at our sights here. So we have our rear sight, cast steel, and we have our brass front sight here. Our rear sight needs a little cleanup, it looks like, and we need to take off this casting gate. The dovetail file now. Come in here, start working that open. here at the muzzle my front sight casting has a little bit of a snaggle tooth there so I'm gonna bring it over here 
going to get a little more aggressive. Now when we're installing a front sight like we've talked about before, you want your ramp or the smallest part of your ramp pointed towards the muzzle and have you want to have this vertical height facing back towards the lock where your eye is at. The goal with this is is to use this rear face of this sight to reflect as much light as possible back to your eye through your notch rear sight. So this doesn't fit too bad. Really with a fit like that, I don't want to monkey with it. I just want to center it up like that. Easy peasy. As we work on this much nicer American Long Rifle kit, I want to make a couple notes of some things I've changed about my work setup um, as we move into something quite a bit nicer than we've worked on in the past. So I'm using the same vise setup. It's a Versa vise. I have the TSS Steelworks ball mount that it's hooked to here. Uh, which allows me to pivot and rotate this as I need. In my jaws here, I have a couple things. So this VersaVice doesn't have the tilting jaw like Kibler's does in his videos, but I mocked up a filler, basically, based on one my father had in his vice. This is just a cut piece of hardwood. I think this is cherry with this angle cut here in the back. There's two magnets on this center flat to hold it against the vice. There's leather on the interior side to protect the stock wood. And this sheet of plywood here on the top just keeps it level and keeps it from falling out. So with these magnets, sticks to the vise, that block indexes it for me. And then regardless of what, my, uh, what I'm holding here, this can pivot and help me grip whatever I'm holding. On the other side to protect the wood from the steel jaws here, I have two leather pads. I've mocked these up based on, I think what I saw in one of Kibler's videos, but so I, I have this one, it's a little narrow up at the top, it just drops down into the vise. The tabs on the bottom are long enough that the weight pulls it down, so it's not trying to flip out of the vise. And then I made this shorter, wider one to cover up for my hillbilly first attempt. And then on the other side of the bench, over here I have basically just and upright. Um, you'll see folks with these freestanding. I don't have that set up here on my bench. So I've mocked this up out of some plywood and two by fours. This is really simple. It just gives me support on the other end of the long rifle. My vice is over here. I have this that spins up to the rear. So if I'm working something, I need to hold uh, the piece on this upright. I can, can with that as a stop. And then I've cut this leather pad to go on top just to protect uh, the stock from getting marred from that stand. If you're used to building some of the more shorter Hawken-esque kits out there, the Woods Runner and the other Kibler kits and other American long rifle kits are gonna be notably longer, and it's gonna be difficult for you to work them with just one holding point in your vise. So I recommend getting or making up some kind of support for the other side of your bench so you can work the entirety of the stock without worrying about flexing it too much and possibly breaking it. I moved my support out here to totally support this muzzle end. We have our machined nose cap here. It should just slide right on and it does. I'm going to go ahead and clean up those gnarly bits real quick. What's neat about this nose cap is these holes here, I mean, a lot of times you'll see just a single rivet put in here to mount this nose cap. But on this in particular, we're going to screw from the inside out through the stock into these threaded holes in this brass nose cap. If you're a fan of development and engineering, it's just a fun little note. At this point, we're two and a half hours into this build. A little rusty getting started here, but we have everything fitted and we're ready to start our metal finish and our wood sanding and finish. I'm super excited about where this is going. I'm excited that, at least in my experience here, this Woods Runner is proving to be a, a very basic assembly. It takes a little getting used to once you get used to the tight tolerances that come with this kit. 
uh, at least I was able to find my way through the whole process. I'm excited now to move on and start getting to the more artistic elements of this build in particular. Not that muzzleloader building uh, isn't artistic and the fitting of parts isn't artistic, but I'm excited to focus more on the finishing aspect with this kit. As a part of that, <clears throat> as a part of the finishing process, I've got a rundown here of what the owner wants on this kit. And something that I want to work on here, as you might be able to see from these car these drawings here, is I want to play with a little bit of carving on this kit. We need to do a little bit of sanding, a little bit of wood finishing to get it ready for carving. But this is a little bit of a tease of, of what I have planned for the finishing out of this kit. If you're planning a Woods Runner build of your own and are interested in applying a little bit of carving, I will have a PDF download for free. No email address needed or anything. You can print it off and practice some sketching for this carving. Now, again, I'm not an experienced muzzleloader builder. I'm not a pro, but in my experience and the experience of folks that have talked to me and taught me over the years, Practicing by drawing is a great way to get started. I know I feel much more comfortable with these curves and these scrolls since I've drawn them about 50 times trying to get them right. And having that done with pencil and paper is a lot easier than trying to do it in one shot with your chisel. So something to consider in between videos, print this out, practice some sketching, practice some carving research, and start planning for your own muzzleloader build. Once again, I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.